So if you're wondering why it is that good surfers always seem to have way more time than you do on a wave, this tip's for you. So turn delay technique hasn't always been a big part of skilled surfing. In fact, it first really raised its head in the early to mid 1980s, the Jurassic era of modern surfing, with Tommy Curran and the double pump bottom turn. Tom, along with every other top pro surfer, knew the bottom turn was the key to every other part of his surfing. He also knew that the simpler he made it, the better connection he would make with the wave, which meant delaying the turn just a tiny bit longer than he might once have done. This is why the great surfers of today surf so much closer and tighter to the lip and pocket, yet also seem to be hitting it harder than the rest of us. They leave everything just a fraction later. Then they do the turn without a trim pump or any other weird little pre-turn adjustment. Oddly enough, this gives their turns more singular force, which means they're getting more with less. So the self-diagnostic, <laughs> you may be turning too soon if you're off and out running the wave down the line, then you're stalling or slowing, trying to get back to it. Your top turns feel a bit slow and take a lot of effort, more than seems really necessary. Uh, you have chronic knee and hip joint pain, especially in the rear leg. Your classic wipeout involves being knocked off your board by whitewater or foam balls. Any of those boxes tick? Any of them feel familiar? Maybe you're turning too soon. So why does a delayed turn work better? The big advantage of a turn left slightly late is it almost always occurs with more help from the wave itself. You know this already, maybe without knowing it fully consciously, wave faces exert more pressure on a board in the curves than they do in the flats. So a turn done on a wave that's had time to produce curves in the base or pocket will gain drive and direction from that pressure. Likewise, a turn done earlier on a flatter wave face will inevitably take more work from you. And it's a self-fulfilling cycle. If a turn's done earlier, chances are it will carry to a spot away from the lip. Maybe out on the flat shoulder or dead water area before the lip's been able to form, the flatter wave base will make it more difficult to turn straight up the face, and the flatter top half of the wave will be of little help in redirecting. Thus, an early turn leads to another early turn, leads to a loss of speed, and a struggle to regain trim. Sound familiar? Don't feel bad if it does. Delaying major turns takes a real leap of surfing logic. It doesn't come naturally. Yet this is why many pro surfers seem to be riding unnaturally fast. They're plugged in closer to the wave's true energy. Their vertical turns reflect off a falling lip instead of leaving them out on a fattish shoulder struggling with that turn. So here's a few tricks worth trying with this one learning to delay your turns. When you get to the wave base, just wait, just run it out a little tiny bit more. Go out to the flats if you need to. Let the section form for a moment longer than you think you should. Then do the bottom turn and drive it through all in a single movement. You'll get into the lip a fraction later, but with a little tiny bit more speed. You'll also find your next turn is automatically delayed. Work on the backside stuff first. It's often easier to develop a nice turn delay on your backhand because your bottom turning off your heels and the directness of that weight transfer through your heels into the board can give you a bit more confidence and it can encourage a more vertical line out of the bottom. Try straightening your takeoff angle a little bit, dropping straighter down the wave face so the bottom turn automatically occurs a bit closer to the curl and rely on that heel weight to push the turn just a bit steeper. If you're feeling super confident, you can try another really hot surface trick and do the delaying part up in the lip on takeoff. Instead of getting in early and driving down the face, hold up the drop until everything's really steep. Left fractionally later, your drop will put you on the wave base right on the money for a clean one stage carving turn. A floater is another kind of lip delay. Leaving your drop out of the floater for an extra half second can give the wave a chance to develop extra turning curve in the base. So look, the most important thing in developing this kind of technique, this delayed turn stuff, is kind of overcoming your own concerns about it. Part of every surfer's makeup is an instinctive desire for a comfort zone. And leaving things till the last second doesn't always fit with that instinct. But surfing instincts are artificial. They can be remodeled, if not completely, then a little bit at least. 
challenge yourself to take a bit more time and work closer to the wave's energy as a result. Either way, you'll have taken a really nice step forward in your surfing. So here's a lesson that really fits this delayed turn thing, all right? Want to clean out some of the crap from your style? Ride a single fin. No, this is not some lame retro fashion inspired move. It's a great way to get back to the basics. Now, a multi-fin board is a bit like an overpowered car. The luxury can lead to sloppy driving. But a singly's lack of fin volume and corresponding lack of fin drive forces you to surf with a much sharper eye to the wave's actual power. It'll give you a refresher course in timing, trim and accuracy of turn. Taking your time and you're looking at the wave, your surfing improves. You take that headspace back to your normal board, world of difference.